Okay, so this is the Ledger Nano X, which for some reason the battery doesn't work. So we're going to open it up and have a look. So once you plug it in with the USB, you plug it in here and it only works if it's plugged in. If you take it out and you try and start it like this, if I hold that down, nothing happens. So we'll open it up and see what happens. So take this off. Then we'll try and pry it open and see what the go is inside. Okay, that light's pretty good. So I know that the top pops off. Just looking for a space to put this into. They're damaging it. So I've just put the knife through there and run it along here. It'll pop off. It hasn't caused it any damage. Got to pop it off. So I'll pop that a little bit. If I can get a tiny screwdriver in there, it'd be better. Like that. Just turn the screwdriver sideways a little bit as you put it in. And this should just pop off. Like that. So don't force it in any way. So there we have it. Whoops, just hit the camera. So I'll put that there. So there's a button on there as well. And just remember how it goes in. So the big large button is on this side. Now this should pop out like that. Now how it was in there, not sure if you can see that, but that, you see that movement? That could have forced it away from the pins underneath. So there's the battery, there's the pins that go on to these terminals here. So that's it. My God. So that's a design fault. Put that up over here. It's probably better like that. That's a design fault. Look at that. So as you push this, your USB in. I'll fast forward some of these segments if it's too slow, but I can see that. Maybe should line up with that. I'm not sure if that fits through there. Probably not, no. 
see it's almost flush for that so it might fit through there a fraction but I'd say because when I did originally put the the um, port the C port into here for the first time it was very hard to push in and it's probably pushed it back against this so the design faults there's too much space in there so I'm going to try and fill that space up number one and number two I'm going to lift these pins up in here lift both of them up so it's definitely going to you don't want one too, too much higher than the other one, it's got to be exactly the same. So that's about right. This pin on this side's fairly high. I don't think I need to lift that, but just in case, I just lift it a tiny bit. So there's the battery. Now, I'd say in the future, you're going to probably have to replace this battery because you don't want your this thing to start sort of depleting that much that you've got to completely charge it all the time so I'd say you're going to replace that in the future it's another design file the battery's tiny as so that's virtually it so I just got to find a solution for the movement in here I don't know what I'm going to do yet but I don't want that movement I don't want to be pushing my USB in and it goes back to there and faults over the top of the pins so I'll get back to you in a minute I'll pause this okay so what my solution was is to get a piece of rubber like this like that so there's uh it's not hard hard rubber it's quite soft so I can bend it so I can bend it like that so I've I've sliced a piece of that exactly the same size as to fit in here so I'm not sure you can see that it's Put it in there so there's a thin piece of rubber in there and I'll attempt to put the lids back on and shut it up and see if that works so here we go so I put that back there just blow that off so there's the two buttons back into place and then I'll put the put that back on there so To try and hold that button on as you put it down it should go back on pretty easy okay so I'm going to plug it in and see if that actually works now so so as I push push this in it should just it shouldn't push back at all so it's forcing back inside there to that rub piece so it's not so much pressure on it and we'll plug it in and see if it's going to hold the charge now. So the terminals inside would be uh, locked down tied on top of the of the uh, flat pieces of gold or whatever they were to um, to charge the battery. So we'll plug it in. Okay, so I've finally done it. I just had to pull the pins up so, a bit more. As you can see up the top corner here. We have the little battery there which means it's charging before it just had a like a powerpoint sort of signal so now 
um, it looks like it's charging so I'm going to leave it charged for a while and, and um, see how good it is but if I do pull this out now I've got power before I didn't have that power as soon as I pull this out then it's uh, finished so I'll put that back in and see if the sign comes up 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that sign would come up by now if it wasn't charging. So it looks like I've done the trick. So all you need is something <coughs> on the back side of the circuit board inside and to lift the pins up on the front so it has a positive um contact with the two plates underneath the the circuit board and um, that should do it and just put it back but uh, make sure when you're opening it just use a really thin razor blade or something to open up partially um, <clears throat> get something like that which is a it's just a specific razor for it just slice that in open up a little bit and then uh, slowly just pull it apart with that just turning it sideways and it'll gradually um, pull that board pull the main um, plastic cover off the circuit board and then you can open it right up and uh, <clears throat> make sure that the big button here this big button here is on this side when you put it back together again so it's the opposite side to where you've had the USB-C port and uh, now when I push that in there's no give for the circuit board to move up and down which was a design fault in this thing so uh, now when I push it in it's not it's got something hard to press up against the the circuit board when it's inside up here and um, that should do it so all you do is put this thing back on top like that and there you have the have it working again now that saves me a lot of problems I don't want to sort of send this back to France and I had to get all my crypto off it it's just been a pain in the in the bum so I looked a few things up on the on the internet I've seen a couple of ways of doing it but I think um, having something rigid in the this uh, on this side of the circuit board is better a little bit rubber not too hard a plastic uh, not steel you don't want to put steel in there because it'll maybe heat up or cause some problems in the in the future so I've just used a piece of hard rubber rigid rubber and that's done the trick and lift it make sure that you lift the two plates up on this side the two pins to make contact with the two plates and you should be good okay thank you so <clears throat> just before I finish I'd just like to talk about <clears throat> this is the software up here and um, <clears throat> one thing that I didn't like about it is um, so I've got 10 apps installed and it's taken up uh, 572 kilobytes of um, the full capacity is 1.78 megabytes so over here it says 1.22 megabytes free now <clears throat> why they made <clears throat> something like this which is a, a hardware wallet with such a small amount of megabyte space on it is, is beyond me maybe because they want people to update in the future because this is just like what two megabytes of space so with 10 apps on it already it's already used up uh, coming up to half so m some apps take more space than others as you can see the, by the segments here some apps are very small but some apps are taken up big space so I could there could be other apps which take up a lot more space than that so when you think about it if it's got 10 apps on there now just say 15 apps I'd probably max out it at at 30 apps now <clears throat> I know 30 different cryptocurrencies is uh, is probably not good to have but uh, sometimes you do go overboard and you take on little ones that you think that's gonna skyrocket in the future but I think the capacity for a uh, 2 megabyte capacity is very small so definitely if uh, another ledge, uh, ledger comes out which is um, 
more capacity than this I'll probably get that one because I've had a few problems with this one I'm not sure hopefully they've um, looked at all the different problems in the future that people are having like plugging the USB in so <clears throat> I just pulled it out then so here is here's the actual USB drive here um, so what was initially causing the problem was when I first got it I probably pushed in too hard there but I couldn't get it right in so it wouldn't go in unless I pushed hard so that probably pushed the whole circuit board to this way which sorry go back again because you couldn't see before so here's the actual device itself um, <clears throat> what probably happened is when I first got it when I plugged the USB port in it wouldn't go in so I had to push hard to get it in and once I did push hard on it then I'd probably push the whole circuit board inside this to the to the right and that's probably caused the problem with it because um, it's taken the two terminals on the battery off the battery and um, it hasn't been charging ever since I've always had to plug it in and it's never been as you can see low battery 18% remaining so now it's charging that's not a problem but <clears throat> definitely in the future if another one comes out then I'm going to get that because this is just uh, two megabyte space is just a joke and uh, I'll hopefully they've ironed out all the problems in the future with um, with this model so this is the Nano X Legend Nano X so uh, I hope this has been informative for you and if you did have that problem and you fixed it then good on you okay see you later